Approximately 45 minutes ago, I heard St. John. I heard him speak. Don't be misled, it's not like St. John came and spoke to me from heaven. But I just recorded his voice on the same recorder that is recording my voice. What am I doing? This is like the fifth take that I'm doing to try to begin this series on why you love Rokor. I don't even know where to begin. My name is Peter Lukyanov. I work for the Fund for Assistance and have been working on this series trying to figure out why you love Rokor. But no matter what happens, I, I just, I don't know where to begin. I have been interviewing people for 10 years, over 100 plus interviews. What, how do you even begin talking about why you love Rokor? But it seems like no matter what we do, everything constantly keeps running into the mother of God. I can't explain it. I wish I could. The interview with Father Nictarius Yankson that was published last week was not planned. In fact, I wasn't even supposed to be in Jordanville at that time. And yet, here we are. I guess the mother of God began this series for, for us. But then where do you go from there? There's so much to cover in the next few weeks. And this series is developing organically on its own, kind of like Rokor. Nobody ever planned for Rokor to begin. I'm sure in 1917, no one was sitting there thinking that, you know, we should take the Russian Orthodox Church abroad and maybe then uh, there'll be parishes all over the entire world and there'll be people um, that are not Russian at all considering this, themselves to be part of the Russian Orthodox Church. N none of that, no one could have possibly thought that. And yet, people were thrown out by the revolution, by war. And the Mother of God led them. And so, I would like to begin this series by playing a recording of the voice of St. John. This is a cassette that I just found about 45 minutes ago. My grandfather left it for me. It was in 1963. And St. John had the Kursk icon brought to San Francisco because there were a lot of difficulties with building the cathedral. There was a lawsuit, and he was actually betrayed by some of his closest friends and allies. And so the Mother of God comes. And this is what St. John had to say. Храм, в котором мы подойдем, 
и мы уходим через многие страдания верующих людей, а будет нам для дорог, потому что он будет выстроенный храм, как ни один другой. Через него придет благословение Божие на всех тех, которые не падают духом, в эти тяжелые тесно практическое время. Он пок... своей милости Божьей Матери покоит и тех, кто по неразумию своему, что не просит против Господи храма, и затем с покаянием прибуд... припадут к владычице нашей Богородицы. И как здесь часто французская после туманов светлый лучей пробивает туман и разгоняет его, так лучи солнца правды разгонят тьму, как новейшие духовные тьмы новейшие на участках Сан-Франциско, разгонят в углу в губах людей, не понимающих против кого они и против чего они идут. Да поможет против родиться, нам обвиниться, веди нам слово условия Божественного Сына, да посияет солнце правды, да будет причин собраться со всеми нами. What are you feeling right now in your heart? What do you feel when you hear St. John say, our God is stronger than anyone? That feeling right now, that is why I love Rokor. But how do you put that feeling into words? Well, I'd like to introduce you to Father Joe Watts, a convert priest from Tennessee, who, in my opinion, explained it better than anyone else. There is something that lies at the basis of the Russian church abroad. It appears to be the continuation of the fathers. If, if I can be fairly blunt, in the Russian Church abroad, when they look back at their hierarchs, Metropolitan Anthony Krapovitsky, or Metropolitan Anastasia, or Metropolitan Filaret, or Metropolitan Laris, or Met they, they look at their hierarchs almost with that same sense of feeling that the rest of Orthodoxy looks back at a St. John Chrysostom, or a St. Basil the Great, or St. Gregory the Theologian. For the Russian Church abroad, these are just the modern fathers of that same lineage. These men are extraordinary because, one, they were all born in a different century. They were born in the 19th century but reposed in the 20th century. They were born in a world, Tsarist Russia, that ceased to exist by the time that they reposed. And they were also of an educational level and of a spiritual level and of a personal moral level that seemed to have ceased to exist in the West as we turned to the 20th century. So that when here are these men, and it was strange that you would you would read about them arriving in Western Europe and arriving in the United States, and they were almost like they might, might as well have been not from 30 or 40 years ago, they might as well have been from 500 years ago. They they spoke in a way that was ancient. They looked in their personal countenances like they were ancient. And there was a grace about them, and there was a, a, a beauty about them that, that I think shocked the West. And, and they came, and what did they do? They came and they began to address the things of the modern world as if they came right out of the ancient world to address them. But how did this happen? It was the hand of God. When, when things began to, to fall within Russia, they were forced upon our shores. But what was, what was as a curse for Russia became a blessing for us. And the, the effect that they uh, had, it, it's still rippling through time. And so, as I said before, so you have people like me. I've never met any of these hierarchs. And I'd really never met anybody who had met these hierarchs. But nevertheless, there's an affection for them. That affection rises up into such a degree that Russian Church Abroad members will sit around, even though they have never met Metropolitan Anthony Krepovitsky or Metropolitan Filaret, they will talk about him as if they knew him. And if there's a dispute within the church, we'll quote one of the first hierarchs, and that will resolve the dispute. We'll say, well, St. John said this, and it's over.
They really were saints. They really were holy. They really were imbued with uh, all the graces of the church. And being imbued with those graces, they were a hierarchs that were rightly dividing the word of truth as we pray in the Divine Liturgy. I have never seen the same level of affection and the same level of continuity of memory, the same level of place of still existing authority of hierarchs that are now past. And it's, it's really quite an amazing and unusual phenomenon in the Russian Church abroad in comparison to other jurisdictions, uh, I would say, in this country. This is why I love Rokor. Why do you love Rokor? Comment on this video, send us a message, and tell us why you love Rokor.